Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Wanted to do a real quick video on Unified Namespace because a lot of people are asking about how it works, what is it, is it viable, etc. The short answer is, of course it is. I'm Kevin Jones from Ectobox and let's get into talking about the Unified Namespace. First, I'll set some real quick context. Manufacturing challenges. There are a lot of them at the global level and at the plant level. How do we solve these kinds of challenges? It's with data. <clears throat> Companies need to become more data-driven to compete, to drive through these challenges with inflation, to be able to work through some of the supply chain disruptions, and to continue to solve those challenges in the plant, the shorter term uh, challenges within the plant of unplanned downtime, productivity, uh, etc. They need to get that deeper visibility and that real-time visibility into the plant floor. What does the current state of manufacturing look like? Typically, companies will have an ERP system at the top of the organization and at the plant floor, of course, they'll have machines and people. Some of the most valuable people in the company are their operators and other people working that plant floor, working the machines. The well, purpose of the organization exists because of the machines and the people creating the products. But in between are spreadsheets and pieces of paper. How do we get a schedule from the ERP system down to the plant floor? How do we get a work order out of that schedule into the plant floor or a traveler? How do we get the bombs down there? How do we report data back to uh, the carpeted office to know whether we're making the right things or the wrong things or making them on time, etc.? By filling out pieces of paper and spreadsheets and trying to analyze the data. But that data is going to be old, inaccurate, and uh, slow. What, what other kinds of challenges do we have as well? When companies try to create connections between systems to get that real-time visibility into what's going on, they'll often put the ERP system at the center of the company. And if we're talking about connecting to the plant floor, that's a mistake because ERP systems are not very good at connecting to the machine floor or the plant floor. Uh, with the machines and pull on that data. Some ERP systems will add modules or some basic capabilities, but at the core, the ERP system is a very high level strategic orders, accounting, finance, inventory kind of uh, product. There are other products to solve these kinds of challenges. Mm -hmm. And when they put that ERP system in the middle, they'll create all these discrete connections between that and other systems. And those discrete connections become very difficult and expensive to maintain. So what do we do? Well, let's think about it a different way. Let's actually connect everything and everyone into a network. And at that point, into a specific network, which we'll get into. And at that point, all layers of the business are going to be integrated and operate based on that real-time data and information from all the other layers of the organization. Stakeholders are going to know what's going on in real time, current state and future state. That is becoming a data-driven manufacturer. But how do you implement those kinds of solutions? Three options, monolithic architecture or MES, point solutions off the shelf, or building a solution specifically for you using modular MES solutions, and also putting together that, that foundation using the unified namespace. Monolithic architecture, you can read the details right here, very expensive upfront, high risk, typically go about as well as that ERP implementation you probably did a year or two or three ago. Point solutions uh, are good. They're certainly less expensive, but they are limiting. Many of them will connect to the machines and give you some nice dashboards, but that's it. Some of them will connect to other systems and they do pretty well. And a few we know and that we work with are actually really pushing the envelope and connecting to multiple systems and providing a lot of capabilities. But in general, most of those point solutions are less expensive and faster time to value, but still they're solving only those short-term problems within the plant, downtime, production, et cetera. But there are those longer-term uh, challenges that need to be solved as well to drive changes in the business model, differentiate in the market, uh, and uh, connect with your supply chain. That's when you become a real, truly data-driven organization. Uh, the third option, built for you option, uh, is where we take modules of an MES system uh, and work with existing products that, you know, what we call brownfield, existing products that are already in place and connect them in an organized fashion. Limit the risk, less cash to spend, shorter time to value, and we're solving the short-term problems as well as the bigger, longer-term problems because 
we are putting an architecture in place at the same time we're building that that first solution, that pilot solution. That architecture is the unified namespace. It's a quick view of it. Single data hub in the middle, connect the data like PLCs uh, to this UNS, this unified namespace. Uh, PLCs will publish data in the unified namespace, MES data or MES system uh, like a pilot project we can put in place with work order management, OEE, and downtime uh, as one module, you know, using an MES Lite product that we've built. That can then subscribe to that uh, PLC data from the unified namespace, work on it, create a calculation, and then publish that data back into the, the OEE calculation, let's say, back in the unified namespace. And some other system, like a BI system, can then subscribe to it uh, and then display that, that data. Let's get into a little bit of detail about what the unified namespace is. It is really the single version of the truth or single source of the truth. But how do we create that? Well, we set up a hub of communication, a single central hub of communication. And then we publish into that central hub of communication all the data from all the uh, applications that we want to connect with. That will then provide us the current state of what's going on in the organization. And then when we're publishing that data into that a single hub of communication, we're going to structure that data so that it has value, so that we can actually see the structure of the business. At that point, once we have a hub of communication providing the current state of the business across all the systems that need to connect, and we're organizing that data using a structure uh, to show how the plant works, then we are providing a single version of the truth and that then becomes the foundation of the digital transformation initiative. Here's how we organize the data. Basic idea that's borrowed from ISA 95 part two. Uh, how data is organized. Enterprise, site, area, line, and cell. And you can see based on this example here with Coca-Cola, you know, a fictitious, uh, well, <laughs> Coca-Cola as a company and the fictitious plant that's in Pittsburgh, uh, where we're from, uh, you can have the enterprise, which is Coca-Cola, the site is Pittsburgh, the area is a bottling uh, area, and then the line is line one, and then a cell is PLC one, with the PLC tags listed under that. And then you can start to add functional areas as well. Let's say we add an MES system where it's going to calculate OEE and downtime for that bottling area. Let's stick that in there uh, and have that data organized under that particular namespace. This is how we organize the data. This then represents the current operating model for the organization. What does it look like from an architecture perspective? Machines on the plant floor connected through various systems, Kepware, Kep, uh, Kep Server EX, uh, to an edge gateway. And then we're typically converting that data from whatever protocol for any systems you have. We're converting that data into MQTT Spark Plug B and publishing that data into HiveMQ as one example of an MQTT data broker. And that data, as we're publishing it in for all the different machines, from all the different lines and areas, and eventually plants across a whole enterprise, we're publishing that data into that whole enterprise site area line cell structure. And if we want to integrate transactional systems, we'll use a product like HiBytes or something similar. It can connect to APIs, databases, all kinds of other systems. And then in the same way, we any data that we're publishing in or that will subscribe will be subscribed to from Hybyte, that data will be structured in that same way through enterprise site area line cell. What does it typically look like? This is a good view of a unified namespace breakdown by site, line, and cell. These are a little small right now, but don't worry. We'll create some more videos uh, and uh, get into a lot more details. These actually come from uh, Dave Schultz over at uh, G5 Consulting that we work with a lot. Uh, and he's going to be involved in some of these videos and get into some really deep explanations. So I'm really excited to do uh, these videos because a lot of people, again, have been asking about this because there's a load of value. There's tons and tons of value for the short term uh, challenges that companies have and for the longer term where they're trying to become a true data company like Facebook, Google and, and, and Tesla. Tons of value. Lots of fun to, to do these videos. We're looking forward to it. Please subscribe to uh, see other updates and when we're pushing those videos out. And please also give us some feedback. Looking forward to it. Thank you.